So welcome back to On The Road Gameplay, uh, gameplay number 53 now, this is quite cool, 53, video 53, 53 of gameplay, eh? So, yeah, um, we're back with the Scania 6x2 container transport, uh, the Scully tour, the, of course the double container Scully tour, you know, of course, you know, from the last video, also we got this. But yeah, quite funny that, so we, I did that, so we started a new save with this game, so I had to just build it all the way up here to get back to where we, where we left left off, so. But anyway, I don't, anyway, I won't probably end waffle on about starting a new game, but I know we're sort of kind, it's kind of like we left the last video off, it's the same truck, same, same thing, but yeah, we did start a new save, I don't know why I did that, but, but we just built up our, fees to get our truck again back to back to where we left in the last video you know so yeah uh so hopefully you guys are doing well because got the bill bar which way it's right this is very good fun now actually you know your truck shows and that you'd have this kind of good look to it where are we at the moment actually let's have a look on the the nav uh, when we're at the moment uh and so we're in the north of germany uh, and and railway shipping, you know, as well. How much as well. Oh, in the last video, really. And it's every dot which that was the same. I wonder if I can get myself up in the crane yet. I don't know. I'll try it. So let me get up in the cab this time. Since the new patch says, so if it'll let me in. Probably want to let me up a few stairs and then... Oh, take me that down again. Probably up here. Yeah. Let's just go back down. <laughs> all all to the ground. Uh, fine. So yeah, uh let's get a delivery set for you guys. Let's get this all off and run on the on the go now. So yeah, we're yeah, we're here of course. Where should we go? What journey should we go? Well we won't go too far again. Uh I think Berlin would be quite decent, eh? I'll try Berlin. Berlin, Berlin, Berlin. Uh, where is that? Mad the bug out so it could be a decent journey, right enough saying that as well. Uh, could we go to Berlin? Berlin? I don't know. Mad the bug, Berlin. I don't see Berlin. I think. I think. Um, Mad the bug. Oh, he's sound. Uh, I don't see Berlin. I don't think there's a lot of us shipping in Berlin, so that's probably why. So let's go to Madavug. That's a decent journey. So you can see the one video. That's one to Madavug. We can find me another one as well, of course. Because then we've got the double trailer, so we can always take another one to And Madavug as well. If I can find. Still, just go for one. Let's go for a brutal one. Uh, yeah, well, sorry, we'll need to move ourselves up so we off a little bit that so we because we're not in white position. So we'll just pull us pull up here. I know that's beat, well beat, you know, because I'll get that sorted out in a sec. So yeah, let's do this. Oh, we can climb on the trailer. That's cool. I don't know if I'll need to do this as well. Are we in position? That's the thing. I don't think we're in position. Oh, are we? I think we need to move this way. Yeah. Yeah, that's us. We're rocking. Rocking out with two containers. Uh, yeah, both of them are fighting the same way. Let's just get in the truck now, eh? Not nip in. Right. Uh, tackle. Yeah. Get all that done and dusted. And we're on the road. We'll be on our way. Of course. You know, 
Want to sleep down and call the time when I lead the docks out to this. Give a wee cheeky honk. So yeah, uh, I see hope I hope you guys are doing well. Um I did a wee quick video just just uh, it'll be on the channel. It's not really a gameplay video but I did something quite that I did something different and I did a wee sort of quick quick bug video. The truck's still in the air still, yep. Still still kangarooing itself up. As before setting up in the air like that. Yeah, I did a I was so did another bit I did a bit slightly different video and it's not really a gameplay video, just a really quick video because I found a sort of game breaking bug in this patch or something. Because I, I I just I just was wondering to myself I mean wondering the truck I mean the truck was in I mean I had the truck I mean the truck was in I kind of explain it a bit better in the video, probably you know what I mean. But I know, I mean, somehow um, when I backed the truck up, I had, I had even like orders, and I was driving from like three, three white, like, three driveways in the back of the truck. And when I sort of backed the truck in, and when the road was all put in, something like the truck couldn't move. Like it was completely static, it couldn't it couldn't move at all. So I was wondering what the what what the hell was that? Like I was thinking it was like a bug or something. It was just it's ridiculous where that was. Like I'd never seen it happen before. Like I just thought it was the patch. I thought it was like a game breaking bug that we just found. Like Yeah, I was just wondering. Like I bought a new truck as well. We I reset the truck and that, and that never helped. And tried to do other things. Tried to shift it in reverse and forwards by eating up and down, and that never did anything. Like if you do watch the video, the last the wee video, you know what I mean. I, I went. I tried to. I just. I did them um, do it. I was pushing down on the the accelerator. You know. It's, Nothing happened. I couldn't move. The truck was completely stuck. Like no, no movement. The engine could. You could start the engine up. I think you could start the engine up, but the truck wouldn't move. Like, I don't know what the problem that problem was. And then I realised something to do with my cargo. Like, like my truck was even overroaded or overweighted or something. It felt like it was something to do. With Whatever that was, and then I mean, I was in the tab, of course, you know, like the every tab. Where we'd normally um, carry my cargo and clients, you know, like all that. I was in there, and then something popped up overweighted, overroaded. So I don't know what that was all about, because I didn't have a trail on at the point where I bought the when I had this truck. No, I don't know what that was about. And then I quite, I, then I realised I shot it out the window and there was like two, there was like cargo somehow. And then I obviously just deleted it. And I signed it pretty much. And then, and then the truck let me. It was something to do with that, it was like an invisible bug, cargo bug or something. I just don't know what that was about, see. I've never had that problem, but. But yeah, if you check that video out, well, it's just a wee quick video. Just me explaining how, how I came across the bug. Just, um, yeah. I won't say all that about it in this video. Because it's on the video anyway. So that's that's another video. This is another, this is another video. This is, that's, the, that's the last video, of course. So yeah, let's get back on the... Back on the... Back in the main chat again. But uh, I've got to talk about something slightly different as well. I don't know. I don't know. If it's slightly, slightly different. A bit off, off topic of the game. I wanted to talk. I still want to talk about tracks, you know. But yeah, I was thinking about uh, EIF trucks. Something just popped. I mean, it came in my mind. EIF trucks. I don't know if you've ever heard of e EIF trucks. It's a bit. It's a bit. They're a bit. Um, a bit of spew nowadays because they're. 
There are not very many of these trucks on the road, but they're, they're a British truck company. I mean, they've been around for a like hundred years, something. And yeah, EI trucks are just amazing looking trucks, eh? Like, I was just looking at videos on YouTube about them, how much I sort of um, miss them. It's like, it's like as much as the, you know, like the Scanning 143, uh, the Scanning the EIF trucks are just very nice as well. Like the EC, EC14, EC11, like they're like way and true looking EIF trucks, like Pinnacles, I guess, like 90s trucks. I was looking at some of their videos, I mean, you just can't beat the sound of the Cummins engine under the hood as well, when you hear them. Most of the videos are like straight pipe as well, so it's like, it's like kind of like our answer to what, what Scania do. Like EIF trucks are just, they're really nice looking trucks. I mean, uh, also there's, there's not that many on the road now, but um, I just remember when I was a lad, you know, like there were so many of them driving around. Like, you see, I have massive anyway, I've been around for a long time, so seeing how, how much I miss them now, you just don't see them on the road anymore. But yeah, DC, DC 11 and DC 14. I just, I think they're like the highlights because I mean, yeah, maybe those ones probably the most as a lad because they're the ones that were from the 90s. I, mean, I used to remember, the, remember them. I used to have like a cast, uh, like a decast model, like one of these corgi models, you call them. Yeah, yeah, had a decast model, like a more sort of. Um, not like a one that's on display, it's a more sort of uh, metal decast one that can just be thrown around I guess. It's not that type of thing, but it's a decast EIF truck. So well, it's kind of based on an EIF truck. It worked quite one. But yeah, um, I remember having one of those and yeah, I just remember that was the one that I think that was an EC series. An EC, I don't know if it was an EC14 or 10 or 11. They're the ones that I remember. The EC series. It's quite amazing. They're quite amazing looking trucks. EIF trucks. And then I'll say, got bought over by MEM, of course, you know. So there was a Titan that EIF trucks or MEM cabs. Well, bad deal with the MEM cars of EIF rogers are pretty much the TGA car pretty much just just neutralised utilised that instead of the own cab when the EC cab courses I'll say pretty much I think that was the last cab and then the the EC I think it was known as the ECT or something is the the man the man cab I mean the MEM cab, so it's pretty much, pretty much a TGA cab. So it's, it's like it looks like an MEM truck. You won't know until you see it. It's an EIF. It's slightly different front edge, but I mean, grill the front grill is slightly different. The only, the only thing, but it, it still looks like an MEM when you see the sort of the last EIF branded trucks. And yeah, that was pretty much. I guess eventually. I mean, just brought the lot, eh? And they just pretty much um, bought EIF complete wins. Obviously, we got MEM cam, MEM trucks, pretty much. That's it. And just MEM, just took over the whole production, I guess, and the EIF was gone, pretty much. A real shame, but just love the trucks, either. I mean, I've seen a couple of them. On the on a couple of motorways, I saw I sure saw one not too long ago. Maybe an EC series. I'm sure it was an EC series. EC series. So it's an EC. I don't know if it's an EC of 14 or 11. But one of those types. It's one of the the ones that I recognise. Quite quite an old old one.
they built them until the early 2000s, didn't they? The EC ones, didn't they? And then they went to the ECT or something, which was the MEM cab. And then I think by the mid 2000s, um, MEM just took over the whole, the whole production. So yeah, that was the end of EIF, and then the, at the end of the day, just shame, shame about, shame about, shame about the British truck industry as well. We don't build any trucks. I mean, British trucks. Just all Scania's, you know, and MEMs and Volvos. I just can't. You can't be be an EIF when you see one. We know, kind of be forgotten, I guess, eventually when uh, when there's hardly any. EIFs on the road. It's like Scania, it's like kinda of like the Scania 143 and you know it's just a it's just a it's just getting a car as a sort of classic truck now to a lot of it's CDFs now it's getting there now that you don't see them. And I remember I know the only thing you'll see them is when they're in fairground fairground and uh, fairground attractions and that, you know like those types, the you know, fairground lights, and use these trucks to move their, move them around, move their, move their shows around to another, another ground, another fairground to just trail it, have them on trailers. I've seen a couple of them, and obviously EIF trucks usually kind of like the, after the sort of end of the haulage days, and lots of then fairgrounds. I mean, fairground winds would buy these trucks, I guess, and, and they just use them for like their shows and that. You know, like this, that's the that's kind of like the last thing you see EIF truck wise is when you've got a fun fair or something. There's lots of them. Normally, you see them sitting there next to the side. Obviously, I don't go to fun fairs or not. You know, it's. Obviously, when you see them, you see you see a couple of the trucks sitting by the sides, like they have like a, like they have like their, they normally pack them in and put them away to move to another show and you know, wet them out. That's how it works. They have like a trailer and that as well. So that's that's still a thing. I think yeah, I don't know why I don't know why EIF has a connection to the fund, but it's quite it's quite funny now actually. No way, it seems like there's a connection to classic trucks with fun with fun fair attractions. Or fairground attractions. It's not how you want to see it, just those types. It seems like lots of old trucks get get their last legs I guess. Get the last new suit before they end up getting scrapped. They get the fairground then use as fairground lights. So yeah. It's just it's just another thing you put out I guess, yeah, it's Maybe these um, truck drivers would appreciate these trucks a lot more than driving Scania's or, you know, like modern ones, eh? And proper straight pipes as well, open pipes as well, it's always good to see them as well. And so I heard a couple of the open pipe EIF trucks as well, they sound, they sound pretty brutal as well. They have like a, they have American engine, I think the, the one in gear is quite American. So there's like stuff out of a, like a, a bill nose truck, you know, it's that was the same sort of thing. So they have like a, I think it's like a trend, trend, some sort of weird gearbox that they usually have as well. It's like we're different for normal truck gearboxes, I don't know if it's, I don't know if it, it's that way it's called, but there's some separate name for them. Like an Eaton, Eaton. Twin, twin split or something. I think that's the word I've heard them comment. It's quite a bizarre name because not really. I thought like there's like a high range or low range or something if it's twin split. But yeah, I've heard. I've seen that that's kind of. I've seen that's maybe what American trucks have. So it's kind of like the same running gear as a, a American truck, US truck. Just. Got a Jake brake as well, like that as well. It's all kind of American, but it's also to connected to a British truck. Just a British American sort of fella pair as well. I mean, the truck's all British anyway. And these are Gardner engines, I think. 
Apple Commons. Yeah, it's kind of getting out of hand with the conversation. It's good to actually just to talk something different here in the park, so I like to just talk about other things, like, you know, it's nice to get the conversation over to other subjects, not just on the road, but to trucks in general, like classic EIF trucks. And Foden trucks as well. Foden trucks as well is another company. I sort of, sort of follow the fell the same as well. And they had the same. They had the same. They they fell. They fell through the same thing as well. Pretty sure Daft bought them over, didn't they, or something? I don't know what happened to Foden. I'm sure Daft bought them because uh, the Foden trucks had the uh, Daft's Daft cabs the way ones, didn't they? Like, but I had like common engine Cummins or something, Fellow France, just the same as EIF have, it's almost exactly the same Fellow I guess. Well, oh, oh, this guy, I was going to do that thing, I can't even mind what the, you know, I'll try and get out of this, I need to remember to do that. God, I don't know if I got that, that, so that was close. Great check them anyway. Yeah, no, I think. Ford and Fell the same thing as well. Just that Fell I think that was the same Ford and trucks or night well moving we nice wooden trucks as well. When you remember Ford and trucks they look very nice looking as well. And then you got you got some other companies as well. I mean British truck kind of the British truck industry is kind of dead now isn't it? There's had any trucks British trucks out there now. And like Scammel as well, of course. I don't think you've ever had a Scammel trucks, but they were way before, way before my time, I guess. They were quite big as well, Scammel. But Scammel trucks are pretty big as well. They used to do the um, steam tractors as well, didn't they? Back in the day, they, they were big as well. I think Ford and then DIF did steam tractors for trucks. That was a big thing in the UK, steam tractors. And I feel like Scammel did stuff in that as well. Like it was cool way, like, like I just miss the British truck industry. You never hear all these names getting said anymore. It's all forgotten, eh? Now yeah, Foden trucks are just as nice as well as EIF, they're a big company as well. And it would be as big as Scania as well and Volvo, yeah. If they were still going, they would be still competing against these Titans, European title Titans. But obviously, not anymore, unfortunately. So we will see, we'll see that the British truck industry is not thriving. It's just everyone's fighting a Scania and an MEM and a Volvo and a DAF and a Renault and a Beko, you know. Just, I don't know why yeah, when no one's buying an EIF or Foden. That's it, because mm. we, we don't have that industry anymore. It's it's just, just moved by the times, yeah. it's getting more reliable trucks. Well, like European trucks, Scania and Volvo, probably reliable trucks and more powerful and we always use like I think we're always not using the own engine. We're always using a Gardner or a Cummins engine and EIF trucks. I don't know. I mean Gardner engines are quite popular. I always remember these engines. I mean I hear Gardner engines. Oh oh oh! Damn it so far. Can't see one. Let's hope so. Let's get the wheels off the road there. Yeah, Gardner engines, uh, they were quite popular as well, I think, in trucks, I mean buses as well. I was, I was doing a bit of research as well, and I hear Gardner engines, I always think about trucks and buses as well. They were a massive company as well, Gardner. Same thing followed there as well, it's... Same thing followed as EIF, it's... It's not, they're not really... Obviously, not wasn't the, the one the really, the choice. The, I mean, Gardner engines are quite underpowered. Apparently, you got comments now. I was reading some comments. So, I think they had lots of torque Gardner engines for the time. With this less power, but more torque. 
and I think torque was more the answer. So you didn't want to have too much power, you just want to have a just a raise the engine with maybe a hundred horse power but you could add as much torque as like a say a truck, probably like a three hundred horsepower engine you probably had in the first torque. I guess these engines were very really reliable. And it's also we didn't have like Gardner engines being balanced engines as well. I don't know if this is true, but I don't know my engines, don't know there's Gardner engines or way before my time anyway, but I just like to research some things in the past. A bit of history. But they look really interesting, Gardner engines. Just like the sound of them as well, we I mean, they're very, very low, cool, razy engines. So they're like a cement mixer when you hear them. That's what I like. Just have a very lazy idle in as well, speed. It's like a it's like a good drum beat as well. It's just just has that like tempo for a drum sound as well. Oh good thing. I need to be careful when I'm driving here that's me. Concentrate on this B road again, you know, as well. Yeah, it just has the garden range is just very relaxing. I always like to hear garden range and it's well done buses as well, like classic buses, gardeners. I've got ch 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 sort of idle, I think that's what I mean. It's like a, it's like, just, I think that's how they idle. There's something like that, that's, how, that's what I just hear about them. I don't know if they I do all the time with that speed, but that's some speed that I've heard. I could be wrong. In garden engines, this conversation's all about British things, eh? British trucks, things, things that I'm, things, all things UK. We can also go out with things as well, like another British truck. Whoa, whoa. Mm -hmm. I don't even use that, so. The bus eight percent down is like boy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's uh, that's a bit damaging. Eh? It's all right. Yeah, let's um let's hope when yeah, what was I saying again? It's a bit off guard to that damage. Yeah, I was talking about another truck manufacturer. Atkinson as well was another British truck manufacturer. Like, they were building some pretty, pretty great trucks like EIF as well. Just like every truck, every a lot of UK truck manufacturing just doesn't exist anymore. Eh? Like let's see, second uh, and Atkinson trucks were quite big as well. Like maybe their trucks were nice. We can have like the big massive A logo in the circle. So, so I remember the old iron breed trucks. There was, I'm sure, there was a point at where the, apparently, I think Atkinson trucks were part of a vehicle, because I remember there was Iron Brew trucks. I'm sure they were branded as Atkinson instead of a vehicle, but they were using the cabins when a vehicle. I just remember those trucks when I was all hard as well, like. I see the other one in the mid 2000s, late 2000s, and I see I saw them. But they were vehicle trucks, like your cargoes, like the older cabin. Like, it's not the new cabin, but the older a vehicle truck. It's just a different logo on it, that's what they put on it. It's like MEM, you know, I mean, it's like, they, it's like that EIF truck, it's, I'm guessing they had the same faith, they were bought over. Well, this is now. I'm gonna use this. I'm gonna be doing this a lot, probably. If I can try it, <laughs> I forgot how to do it again. It's my swearing, it's my bleep, you know, if I can get used to it. Yeah, uh, yeah. I know there's something else, like, I know something else that happened to a lot of British trips, they got exported to Malta as well, or something. There's lots in some videos of them, you can remember some of those like, those like sort of mid-60s trucks in Malta as well, like, like 
called EUC trucks as well. Let's see day great kill. EUC. Oh, there we go. Wait. I'm trying to get this thing a bit, but there. Uh, yeah, I'm going to try and get, I can't even concentrate if the horn is, the horn's a bit the thing there. I'll get to it eventually. Yeah, Malta has a bit of um, British exporting as well. They might export a lot of the British trucks. A lot of the older trucks. I think after we've had a hard life, a lot of the trucks. A lot of the, I mean, a lot of the trucks in the UK gets forwarded to Malta. I'm not sure if that's still, I'm not sure if that's still popular in there as well. I'm not sure if I've ever got to Malta. See what's like, was a British trucks. Something I never think. I think it would be stuff flying still. So it was stuff so yeah, where went daft flying around and maybe a EIF, no doubt. Or Foden. Don't know that's way. I don't know how they old buses in Malta as well. Like the very bright car buses I seen they look quite cool. So that was the same thing as buses as well, they export all British buses to to there as well. Not just trucks. Because I think they drive on the same side as the UK. On the light. Across the way. I've never been in Malta but I believe they must do because if they drive if they export British vehicles then you could definitely would be driving on the, the light, I think. Well, they might start to export in farm vehicles as well, but I don't know. Never, never really thought what Malta what our vehicles they do. They probably export various cars. I don't think they would have British car manufacturing, so they have various cars there as well. But yeah, it's quite a good, it's quite a bizarre conversation on the video today. Eh? Bit of things British, whole thing is British. I should do the name of the video, I think. All Things British. How about that title, eh? Of the video. Oh, British trucking. Oh, no, I'm on the wrong way. What there? What there? I'm getting there. I got it. Oh, <laughs> I didn't see it stop. Thank you. That truck. And managed to, managed to get, get under control. That was, that was close. I'm on these beavers for quite a bit, I guess. <laughs> is it Madderbug? I think it's Madderbug. Let me check, let's just double check. Yep, Madderbug. Yeah, two containers. I think they're going to the same docks, pretty much. Go back for how? Oh, the EI trucks do sling their trailers out, don't they? I've had a bit of rain off stream in this game as well. A bit more rain, but not 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 as much as truck driver, obviously. But yeah, the rain is seems to be increased. I'm struggling at this, but eh? aren't we? Why they have how 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 powerful an EIF truck would be? Eh? But I must do struggle. I'm sure, I'm sure, I'm sure like Moss, I remember seeing Moss and trucks with EIF trucks at one point. I'm sure they had EIF at one point, didn't they? Or Foden, maybe it was Foden. I'm sure they did. Moss and I'm sure they had EIF trucks. Or Foden trucks. I remember seeing them all. The time before they were painted, um, that, to think, that cover, that yellow cover, they were completely black at one point, weren't they? Moss and just had their black, by the way. No, just had like Moss and Rogue on it. I think that's like the some original livery or something. It's all brat truck, but with Moss and Rogue on it. And I assume there was a folding truck or something like that in that livery that I remember seeing. Yeah, I don't remember. But yeah, nice to have a wee conversation about British trucks. I mean, you just don't see many of these trucks on the road, that's what I mean. You only go to truck shows one day, find all these old trucks. Yeah, it's, 
know what these know what these wagons are just reserves now, aren't they? They're not they're not um, they're just collector trucks now, they're not like companies don't really seem to seem to have them and they're free I mean still have a work they don't seem to be like work horses anymore. Could have had their work done they it's all say back in the nineties or something. Of course there's still the MEM the, the sort of MEM sort of um, cabin ones. The the T the was it E I F E C T or something, I believe that was the the MEM one. Maybe there was a couple of them walking out maybe, walking around. But if it's just be un it'd be quite unnoticed it'd be quite unnoticeable because they're just like MEM trucks really. Just running gear is I think they were pretty much the same as in, in the factory. The rest of the was kits and then they were shipped over to the UK when they had the factory in the UK somewhere. So maybe like that, that was probably the thing they did at the end. And they had kits and normally we'd assemble them in the factory and then, you know, just for that, I think that was like the last thing we'd do. So get kits and that, like right, kits from Germany and then and assemble them in the UK. It's like that. That was the thing, I think. But yeah, uh, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure. Um, pretty sure that was the case the last at the time before they shut down EIF. I got back over by MEM and then they sent with them and, and pretty much. I'll say, I'll say just um, pretty much got their cab and MEM cab branded them as NEMs, so the EIF sort of name was just taken, it was just dropped pretty much, that's sort of the last thing for them. You could just easily just take the name off, that's how, how easy it would be, because they're just MEM trucks and under the under the skin of the last EIF trucks. And that's how you, just, you can just easily just take the logo off because it's obviously the MM bottom over, so that's it. It's just funny enough how a lot of these trucks go round. I remember, I think I will see just remember as a lad, I saw loads of those. I saw a lot of British trucks and sure. Here's the rain coming. Oh, yes, yeah, that's the rain. See, that's what I mean. I will rain a bit more in this game, eh? I should have turned it up a little bit. I remember I was saying in a video a while ago that the rain was put down a little bit and I felt like it was highly raining. But we sort of answered my question. I've turned the rain up a little bit. Because now it seems to be raining quite often now. I mean it's it is raining raining then it is raining a bit more often than it was anyway, but Truck driver is a bit old TT, but it's rain, I think, isn't it? And it doesn't rain very long in this game. It probably only rains for like a wee bit and then it stops. So we're not far now. <laughs> I'll just start conversation, it's going pretty quick, okay? It's nice to have a wee conversation on trucks, eh? British trucking. Or Fine British or something, this will be the name of the video. Or British Trucking, I'm not sure. I'll come up with a name, but I won't call it because the whole like this to that, you know, like my video's always been continue to mad about or continue to Hanover or something, eh? stuff like that. Eh? I've got a couple of those on YouTube anyway. Well, I mean, on the channel anyway, that you've always seen. But I wanted to say um, we've we've also made it to over 200 subscribers, as I said before, and uh, we really appreciate you guys with the support. Big jam here. Yeah, it's good to you guys to guys to keep keep up, keep my, keep my channel going. I think that video's definitely got the subscribers going. The the parts video. Definitely got. It's definitely got. It. 
So yeah, thank you very much for the keeping getting to 200. I got that home for you as so. well. That's what we need. Gotta be how we gotta be in. Oh, we're gonna struggle at this hill. We're not gonna get through this way, I don't think. No. It's a bit of a slow start getting at this hallway. Eh? Yeah, so yeah, thanks very much for doing that. Appreciate the society guys and it keeps supporting. We'll get to three unders and no and no no not one eventually. We'll get to three hundred but I'm not really fast whoever we get to we can get we'll get we'll just then uh, get whatever we're getting, you know. I'm not really want to just get to channel or to screen rebels, you know, but so once it's getting up to a decent amount, that's good, and so you guys are enjoying my videos, that's the main thing. Sometimes I just like to go off top it a little bit, as you said, as I was saying earlier, about British trucks. I like, it's not always about me talking about it on the road, but I do try and talk about it as much as I can, but I like driving, obviously, drive trucks, it's always, it's always, um, obviously you need to just it's always quite a boring thing, but it's nice to just chat about other things and this obviously the commentary would keep keep it a bit more company as well. So I think this is us in Madibug now. Rainy Madibug, as you say. It's in rainy. So we've got the rainstorm here and it's obviously nice and low stock. I think there's definitely more weight on the trucks. We're struggling getting up hills and that now, eh? I've noticed that. It's time that's what I've got and that it's going to take a lot longer to break. Like it's the screen already. That's popping in, that building in front. <laughs> All that charts and stopping in and out. That's what it'll pop in. Uh, so, yeah. I don't know if they'll be. I'm not sure. I was thinking about like ETS2. Uh, they don't have any EIF trucks and mods. This is like really not be any connection to a lot of British trucking. There's always going to be a Scania or an MEM or a Volvo. It's never a British truck in ETS2. I've never seen any mods of British trucks in ETS2. I don't know why. That's another thing as well. Because all of any in ETS2, there's always, it's always just the normal trucking, European truck, um, you know, you see anyways. As I said earlier, there's just Tobacco, Renault and MEM and Scania, Volvo, it's all that. It's not any British trucks in ETS2 Iowa. It's not the same. I don't understand that as well. I just think it's just too difficult to mod. Get, maybe you know what I mean. Maybe mod or truck on the British truck. It's, it seems like a lot of British trucks are just... There's not that many British trucks around there, eh? like... Because I mean... Because a lot of uh, the just is just sort of, it is sort of not existing, not existing now. British trucking, and it seems like there's no one's really been too fast bringing out a bring out a ETS2 mod of a British truck. I mean, they should have something, but at the end of the day, we're just stuck with what what we've got here. Eh? Maybe some eventually make a British truck. Never know, we'll make any after trick in this game, eh? That'd be cool. I doubt that'll ever happen, but. But, you know, like, something like that. I know that would be a good thing to have an EIF truck in on the road, but no. I don't think that's going to happen, unfortunately. If it doesn't happen in ETS2, it's not going to happen in this game. You think ETS2 would have a British truck, an EIF or a Forden truck? I've not seen any Forden trucks or EIF trucks. I mean, they don't have any rigid parts. They don't have any many rigid trucks in EIF2, ETS2 either. It's a bit funny. Oh, there's mods right enough of rigid chassis, I guess. And I like small rigid trucks. Enough. Here we are. Pull in here. So yeah, we'll just drop this off, drop our containers off. Hopefully it's not too bad. 
think it's been quite a fair frame sale and journey and just a bit of a wee bit of a mishap some of the corners but obviously I'm guessing it's just difficult to steer a truck sometimes, that's why it's like this. But yeah, um yeah, I don't and see if we we'll hopefully get the daft truck very soon as well. Then that'll be worth trying out. So you just try and name when that comes on me. Eh? It's very faint. Are we green? There must be we must be green because it's it's difficult to see now. It's also this patch so it's difficult to figure out if it's if it's in or not now. Yeah, we must be in. One percent, yeah, that's us. It's all dropped off. So seems like it's all sound. Just have to just walk out and guess guess it's there. So yeah, it's been quite a good video. This eh? so this slightly different, eh? British truck, eh? Obviously, I'm driving a Swedish truck, you know, but just imagine having an EIF truck, EIF truck here. Eh? That'd be cool. A Forden truck, put Forden in here instead of Scania. <laughs> I would have no one trust. We should have it. We should have like an old custom. We should have like a truck, not like apart from truck style. And we should have like a truck font, like a truck. Make the own truck name, so you can change this from Scania to Foden or something. But obviously, it'd be a Scania truck, but with Foden lighters on it or something. With Foden lighting on it, but I don't find it good ever. I don't find that will be a thing. But because I have to keep it. As I wish I was the can, eh? I don't like for I don't think it'll be really but it'll just be really it wouldn't be the it wouldn't be exactly it'll be exactly, it'll just be a bit funny seeing Foden in the front of a Scania. Like a Foden name on, on a Scania truck like you know like EIF and MEM camp it's just these are names that obviously they do stuff like that, eh? Like buy a cab and buy buy the cab and, and obviously put their name on the, a British truck and put the name, put the name on a German, German truck. But put a British, I mean, put a British truck, British name on a German truck. Obviously, it's, it's a bit funny, eh? But hey ho. Obviously, yeah. That's what we don't know. See, yeah. And obviously, Ford and I think, I don't know what happened to Ford. And it's that way. If you if you know, you can comment below or something. If you let me know what. What they what happened to Ford and trucks if they got bought over by DAF as well. I'm sure they got over, but I'm pretty sure they got bought over by DAF. I remember there was this other company from Finland as well, does similar, is a similar company to what Ford and do as well. Like it's an S, it's a S, S G S U, I think. I think it's, if I can pronounce it very well, it's the Finnish truck company. I think it's. Susie or something, I think that's how you pronounce it. But they're the Finnish truck companies, so they put like Renault they put like Renault cabs on on the uh, on like they put Renault cabins on but also with a different name on them. But they use like coming in Cummins engine, like the same as EIF trucks and so it's exactly the same thing obviously in Finland, it's a different company it's obviously similar but EF do, but also a Finnish company instead of a British company. So news like third, part, third party parts on different parts of trucks, you know. I'm going to turn my engine off, actually. I've got it running. Better, better save some diesel way, you know. Like, it's just a hell. Yeah, and so that's what they do as well, was news parts of other trucks as well. Third party parts. So like common engine. No, you can't. Trend splitter as well. It's just I mean, for the parts are way way British anyway. At the end of the day, you know, it's in case the cabin and that maybe also just on a Renault truck. Obviously, I mean that's the that's the Finnish company I'm talking about. It's Susa, I think. So it's S I E S U, I think. I'm just trying to pronounce that company, but I know I know what I mean. It's it's quite a, it's quite a, it's quite a desired company. I mean, it's not a popular one. I, it's like EIF. It's a it's a bit it's a bit obscure, I guess, in Finland as well. It's there needs to be kind of like EIF as well. Same thing, I guess. You know, at the end of the day, they were using cabins of engines and cabins of different parts of trucks. So it's kind of follow the same thing. Yeah, I think I think you might know what I mean with that as well. 
It's a bit weird. <laughs> it's a bit funny what Chuck's doing these days. Eh? I knew they would do something similar to EIS, so I was thinking that, so I'll put that in as well. So, anyway, this has been quite a long video actually. It's been a bit longer. I've been quite happy to talk about Chuck and Chuck's history, eh? And then talking about the game, eh? I'll be talking about Scanning 143 in the next video. That's one of my favourite trucks in general. One of my favourite Scanning trucks is the Scanning 143. You can't, you can't beat that. Just my opinion, eh? It's a very 90s looking truck. I mean, obviously it's not, it's not, I mean, it's obviously... It's, it's, it still looks nice. Obviously this truck isn't as nice as the Scanning 143, but it's still, it is a nice truck, but I always like to look at Scanning 143 and just think it's... A really cool truck. It still looks nice to its day as well, eh? When I see the the Springline models, not the not the not the basic models or the or the sort of basic you know like the basic not like the basic with the basic front edge on it and this looks like a one four two that way, but if you got the Springline model which fancy modern and street looking. But yeah, yeah. I think I've been writing on a bit long for this video, eh? But yeah, we're going to finish it off, I think. I hope you enjoyed, enjoyed this video. Uh, make sure to like, make sure to comment below, and make sure to subscribe to the channel. Uh, I'll have the playlist at the end of the video. Uh, make sure to check them out. Uh, and yeah, I should be back again with another video uh, off on the road very soon. So, bye for now.